today. From Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, it's week three of the NFL on EA Sports. the Denver Broncos. We're just a stone's throw from the Delaware River. We've got some water to contend with ourselves. A steady rain falling at Lincoln Financial Field. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Denver Broncos and the Philadelphia Eagles. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Eagles team as they interplay here. They come in feeling good after back-to-back -back victories. And they looked awfully good last week and came away with a two-touchdown victory. They did have a few reasons for concern defensively, but all in all, they'll take a repeat here if they can get it. Meanwhile, for the visiting Broncos, an early season tilt. And when it's an early season tilt, should be ready to roll. Well, let's face it, the aches and pains haven't really set in yet. And both teams eyeing a really good start to get things going. We get our first look now at Carson Wentz and his Philadelphia Eagle offense. And they are in rhythm on offense because of him. I mean, right now, he's got everything going the way he wants to, finding the receivers the way he wants to, looking over defenses. No interceptions is the number I lock in on before a touchdown pass isn't so bad either. Yeah, what a game he had last week. First down, Wentz. Left side here to Sanders. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. To Miles Sanders. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Second and three at the 32-yard line. They will run for the first time with Miles Sanders. Number 26, Miles. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a game considering the blitz that they just had against them. They'll try and run for it with Sanders. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. First and 10 at the 41 yard line. On first and ten, it's Sanders. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. The numbers for Sanders last week, 18 carries, 66 yards. They've won two straight games, and they've done it with the running game as the focal point of their offense. So in this contest, I don't think about doing it. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Carson wins. Set. They were able to win last week despite him being sacked four times. They might need to tighten the reins a little bit or this one may not end in another victory. You're right about that. They can't count on just winning the game no matter what happens. They can't let the accumulation of hits and harassment in the pocket get to their quarterback. Got to stop that, give him clean lanes and throw the football in order to have a better chance to win again this week. Wentz can pull it down when he needs to, and the 6'5 quarterback picks up the first down. So a first and 10 now in Denver territory at the 38. Working from the gun, Wentz. That's caught by the big tight end, Dallas Goddard. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. First and 10 at the throwing on first is Wentz. Jeffrey reels it in over the middle. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Alshon Jeffrey, his first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Eagles drive right down the field and score the opening drive. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. Broncos nothing. Now after the 
touchdown. Here's Elliott on to kick away. Hamler now to return it. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. So now here are the Broncos for their first drive of the game. And they will be led out by their 6-3 quarterback. And you and I both know that any win is a good win. And that's what they did last week. But there's also plenty for him to work on in his game, wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns, an Head interception. Yeah, you know, he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio. But first and foremost, they did win the game. They'll come out throwing here on first down. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. A very solid gain of 27. Down Denver. How about a guy proving his worth in different ways? Had a big play in the run game to play before. This time, they go right back to him in the passing game, and he comes through with yet another big play. That's why you work out so hard in the offseason, so you can stay on the field and accumulate big plays. That hold coming from the middle of the line, the center. And it's difficult for him because sometimes you've got people right over you, and as soon as you snap it, trying to get your hands up and block them, you can be a little bit late getting it done. Open man, that's Noah Fant, the tight end. Complete two These are his numbers from last week's contest. Five catches, 53 yards. And that was a nice job there pulling that one in. Now, this is an offense that will certainly spread the ball around a bit. And this is a guy that defenses had better focus on. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Charles, we get a look at the draft class here for this team. What do you think? Well, I think for the most part, I do like what they did because, to me, they got some solid players in the early rounds. And then if I'm correct in my evaluation, they got some great value in the later rounds as well. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. So many times we see teams go on the road and want to lean on their running game, but this crew just announced they're going to try and air it out and make hay downfield. They'll look to throw again. He's got his tight end fan. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Facing a fourth down, they come away with 18 yards and the first down conversion. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. They'll roll him out right. They'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Gardner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And it looks like he'll be just a yard shy of the five here as he's out at the six. Seven yards on the pick up there, and now they've got it first and goal. First and goal, Melvin Gordon. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Melvin Gordon, his second touchdown on the season. And the Broncos are an extra point away from tying the football game. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up, meaning when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. Each guy has his own assignment that allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. A good hold in these wet conditions. The point after is up and good, and we are tied at seven. Brendan McManus to kick off for Denver. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Fielded near the back of the end zone. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. So back onto the field. Here come the Eagles for their second drive. Winston, the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll set up to throw from the gun. And complete to Zach Ertz. 
Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. Ten yards. In need of only about the length of the football here on second down. The 35-yard line. Wentz on the give to Sanders. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. All right, Brad, I know where they're really going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. Right back to Sanders on first down. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. you got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. Now Wentz on third down. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. These two teams all tied after one. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. And they'll blow that one up back at the 16-yard line. So it goes as a completed pass, but they lose a full five yards. You know the key to a good screen pass is, don't you? But you're going to tell me, good blocking? Well, good blocking eventually. But first, it's good acting. You want to let the defenders go past you, leak out to whichever side or even in the middle where you want to set up the screen, and then you do your blocking. How about the read, though, by the defensive guys? They weren't fooled at all and actually ran with the linemen to where the play was and smothered it for a loss of yardage. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. First down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. They'll look to throw here on first down. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. It is fun to watch the big man work the middle of the field. How about that post route there? Did an excellent job of getting his head around to look the football in and gain significant yardage. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 43. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Flush to his right. And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack back at the 47-yard line. Well, Fletcher Cox, he's been doing this for a lot of years, and another sack to his ledger there. 
And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Now a throw here on second down, and that's complete. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. He completes this to Sutton. 21 yards there on third down. They talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. Now Gordon on first down. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now back to throw. Sets up the screen to Gordon. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. 19 yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. At the two-yard line. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together in one unit down field. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Denver. Melvin Gordon with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Broncos have taken the lead. And always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on. Just think about halftime. If, if this is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And he'll be encouraging his offensive Brandon line McManus to create some space. Now McManus for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it's capped off by a touchdown run coming from Melvin Gordon. Brandon McManus to kick off for Denver. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. Now back to work for Miles Sanders in the Philly offense. and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Off play action, he'll throw to start the drive. He'll fire it deep for Rager. And incomplete there, almost picked off. That's one you maybe expect your roaming free safety to come up with. But it's second down. Shotgun now for Wentz. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Bradley Chubb doing what he does best, getting that sack. Well, there was second long. Now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. On third and long, it's Wentz. And he's got some space here. 
And he is going to bring this back inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Intercepted. Well, that interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turn to block, find a spot. And now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. They'll try and start this drive in the air. This is the tight end fan. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. No offense. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Two yards left on second down from the 9. Now the handoff comes to Gordon. And here he'll get it down to the 7. Give him two yards. That sets him up first and goal. Well, we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. They scored touchdowns on drives one and two, and now they're trying to make it a perfect three for three to start. Now Gordon. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. They give him five that time as they draw a bit closer here for a second and goal. That didn't just feel like good defense there. That felt like pride, didn't it? He's already gotten into the end zone twice, trying to get there for a third time. No one likes to have the hat trick against them. Second and two. And it's caught. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. And he will score! Touchdown, Denver! It's their quarterback! His sixth touchdown of the season, and the Broncos will extend their lead. That touchdown, Charles, the first rushing TD of his rookie year. I don't know that he's going to be Lamar Jackson or Russell Wilson or Josh Allen at this stage of his career, but he's got youth on his side. Those young legs, he put them to good use there, didn't he? Now McManus to tack on the extra point. And it's no good. No, oh, he misses the extra point. And our score stays right where it is. Brendan McManus to kick off for Denver. Now he's back out there to boom this one away, maybe with some frustration after the PAT miss. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Here's Carson Wentz now with the rest of his offensive unit heading onto the field. He's had a solid start to this game, but bottom line is they're losing, so he doesn't care about his stats. He just wants to right the ship on the scoreboard. He wants to actually increase his stats because he feels like if he does, that means things will get better for his team, maybe get him back into the ball game or into the lead. In these situations, I remember playing with him. And he lost the football. It's picked up by the Broncos. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. Fumble on the play. Recovered. And maybe that one caused by the weather. Of course, the rain coming down. Charles, can you maybe, when you're carrying that football, grip it too tight in the rain? I think that you can, and it's such a delicate balance, too, because when you grip it so tight, sometimes it'll slip out from your body. You squeeze it too hard, and it'll pop out on its own. I've actually had running backs talk to me about that, that when they've tried too hard, even in perfect conditions, the ball gets away from them. They've got to find a good balance, carrying it firmly, yet at the same time under control. But defensively, you're over there trying to catch your breath and try not to show the offense that you're a little bit fatigued. You're right back out there after the turnover. Now they've got to work towards getting another couple of stops and forcing them into at least a long field goal situation. Pass interference. Defense. So they saw the contact before the ball arrived. Penalty flag for pass interference. 
and trying to avoid pass interference is so difficult. You're trying to slow down these skilled receivers, and somehow, some way, they... And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. Fletcher Cox able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. And he's going to go down again. This is what happens when you get behind the chains, as people like to say, when you have obvious passing situations, hard to vary it up and fool the defense. And you hate those situations if you're an O-lineman, right? Oh, without a doubt, because you just know they're coming, and you never know exactly how. They can be exotic in their blitzes, or their athletic ability just takes over. They certainly had good starting field position on that drive, but couldn't do anything with it after three plays. I have to admit that that's a disappointing end to excellent field position. When that drive started they had six points that they were thinking about maybe a little fortunate there that was leaking a little maybe leaking a lot but he got it yeah he actually was able to make it work how about the body language though right as he watched that ball leak to the right trying to try to bring it back in and had just enough to get it done and ultimately cannot get this out to the 25 yard line as he's dropped at the 23 their own 23 yard line the Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. And you're under a minute to go in the half, a first half that hasn't been particularly kind to you. How do you think they'll play this? Well, I think the smart approach is to run out the clock, lick your wounds at the half, and see if you can come up with a strategy to play better in the second. But there's also something to challenging your offense right here. You know, hey, guys, you help dig this hole. See if you can get us out of it a little bit before the half runs out. Let's go make some plays. Man open. It's J.J. Ortega Whiteside. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. Sanders has it over the middle. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. The Eagles will take their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. The kick by Elliott is good. And that will cut the lead down to 13. Broncos 23, Eagles 10. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put some kind of a dent into that lead going into the ball. Anything else we can try to change the lead, lead, but they do know that they're gonna need a little bit better effort in the second half. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. First and 10. At their own. No reason to do anything foolish as they'll snap it one more time on first down. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we've reached the intermission in what right now is a 13-point game as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Time to give you folks at home a look around the NFL on this first official weekend of fall. So let's get to it. We'll start our tour in the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. And it's the Raiders out in front as they approach halftime. Derek Carr has a couple of touchdown passes there. From there, we're off to check out another game. And they've got the lead over the visiting Arizona Cardinals. Robert Woods, a touchdown reception. Finally, let's get right to the center of the U.S. map and check in on the Chiefs at home in Kansas City. And right now, they have the lead over the visiting New York Giants. Patrick Mahomes responsible for the lone touchdown in the game thus far as he's thrown a touchdown pass. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back and forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. And this will make it into the end zone. 
And he'll wind up getting a couple extra yards here for his trouble and bringing it out of the end zone as he's down at the 27. Here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. What can they do now, Charles, to make sure this highlight montage doesn't continue to show more pressure and pressure and pressure? I feel like it always comes back to The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys. But be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. The throw over the middle, taken in. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. He's picked off at his own 47. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. That's where they'll take over. At the 43-yard line. So after the INT, here's Wentz. This short throw caught by Goddard. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for an eagle first down. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. Now Wentz. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. Back to the air on second down. Wentz looking for Jeffrey, and it's intercepted. A.J. Boyer with a pick. And the return will be stopped at the 34-yard line. They'll take over first. Okay, partner. No surprise to you. I'm going to look at this from the defensive perspective. In the rain, you have to be more cautious trying to cover passing routes. Why? The offense knows where they're going with the football. The receiver knows the route he's going to run. You have to make sure you keep your footing underneath you. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Cortland Sutton was the man he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Now they run from the gun with Gordon. They'll get about four as he's past the 35 to the 38-yard line. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from the lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Got a man. It's Judy complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A gain of 21 yards. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. Two chunk plays in a row. The last one was over 20 yards, and so is this one. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try to put the hammer down and finish this one off. They'll run on first down. Gordon, and he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of four on the first down play. 
I think it's pretty evident we can say what a difference a week makes. Last week, he ran pretty much wild, didn't he? Did pretty much what he wanted to do. But this one, they stopped him cold. That, to me, that's good scouting and even better execution. Yeah, and they stopped him behind the line right there. They and he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Cortland Sutton. His second touchdown on the season. And the Broncos push further out in front. Solid response that time by a young quarterback. Last drive interception. This drive, the touchdown pass. I like how you described it solid because you don't get extra kudos for bouncing back if you're going to be a big-time quarterback. You're supposed to do that. But at the same time, when you're a rookie, that's not Gary. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Snags it for the pick. And he is going to be stopped on the return at his own three-yard line. It's interesting that when it comes to two-point conversions, even heavy run teams tend to throw the ball in these situations. In this case, this one was intercepted. Yeah, they weren't fooled. They were ready for the pass, picked it off. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. 27-yard line. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun, it's Wins. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And Eagle first down, Wins to Ertz. Really? Really? Did we just see that? That's a big catch. One-handed, I might add to pick up a first down. I was going to say on third down for the defense, it's one thing to give up a reception. You just kind of shake your head on a one-handed catch to pick up the first. He was unable to shake free there, and they'll cover him for a loss of a yard. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. Play fake to Sanders. Now here's Wentz. He'll fire it. It's caught inside the 25. And he goes down, but not before getting his inside the 25. It's a gain of 34. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Again, they'll throw with Wentz. And his throw here is incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. Again, it's Wentz. Going to throw deep for the end zone. And oh, it'll be intercepted. A.J. Boye with a pick. And a great return as they're finally able to take him down. Intercepted by the Broncos. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offenses call four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. 
And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. It's a and while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. And across the midfield, stripe into Eagle territory. Across midfield to the 49-yard line. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. They keep it on the ground. Again, Gordon. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Give them 14 yards there and a Denver first down. Well, you know me, partner. I never tell them to back off of being aggressive, but sometimes you see the consequences when you're overly aggressive and you don't secure tackles. Guys break through. Trying to sell out to pry that football loose, and just as you said, cost some yardage. Yeah, you got to go get him. Stand him up first before you go for the ball. Don't just go for it initially. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter. Order, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it at them. We've got them now. Brings up second and four at the 13-yard line. On second down. It's Gordon, and here he'll get it down to the seven. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with, and throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to, and it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. And he'll be stopped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the five. Tackle made at the five. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy is nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. Defensively, they must have been expecting a pass. They were in the dime look out there. I think maybe they were deciding to go with speed on the field rather than bulk. I'm with you a little bit surprising. They wanted people getting to the ball as fast as possible. The light. And he will take it in for a Bronco touchdown. Melvin Gordon, his third touchdown of the game and fourth on the year. And the Broncos will add on to their lead as that lead just swells and swells. Look, this has been dominance in all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. So don't we have to give a lot of credit, not just to what we've seen today, but the preparation in advance, coaching staff, commitment by the players to the game plan, and being ready to go in this one. You're exactly right, clean sweep. And boy, they're going to celebrate this one after it's over. And on the other side, this is the game film you just flush and never go back and review. Takes this about five yards deep, and it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. Philadelphia's offense ready to give us another look. Their mini two-game win streak appears it might be going by the wayside unless they can pull the rabbit out of their hat. Wentz and the Eagles now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. I think it's safe to say this is a game he's not going to forget anytime soon, Charles. Three interceptions. It's rare that we see three interceptions by one team, let alone by an individual. And I think that after the second one, he's probably telling his teammates, any ball that's in the air, 
it's going to be mine. And that turned out to be true. Coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. This is Gordon, and he won't get much. Maybe a couple down inside the 35 to the 34. Jake Ryan on the tackle. A gain of two brings up second and eight at the 34-yard line. They'll keep it on the ground. Gordon. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Melvin run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. It's a game An excellent pickup of 20 yards. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. 42 is the mic, boys. 42. 42 is the mic. Hey, come on, now. Come on, now. They're going to try the jet sweep. Robinson with it. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Credit the tackle to Darius Slay. No gain on the play. Defensively, they have that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Offense. They were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You're usually going to pick up a holding call. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Escaping the pressure right. He'll try and run it. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. A breakdown defensively there as the scramble is going to set him up with a much more manageable third down. The Broncos on third down. They've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. This is third and seven. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he'll be brought down well short of the first at about the nine-yard line. That's going to bring up fourth down. Only a gain of two there. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. The kick by McManus is good. And that will push the lead up from 26, and it grows up to 29. Eagles 10. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. Taken about seven yards deep, and this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. At their own 25-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that, and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team, and we were losing late in a game like this, and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Throwing on first is Wentz. Open man, Ortega Whiteside. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Catch is made by Arcega Whiteside. 
And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. When you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Zach Ertz, his second touchdown on the season. And the Eagles get a score closer. A good tight end is a heck of a weapon for any quarterback, especially when you're able to create some mismatches. Sometimes they work against a linebacker. Sometimes they work against a smaller defensive back. But when they find it, they go to it, and it often results in touchdowns. So we no doubt be a miracle comeback from here. But let's see what they can do starting with the onside kick. And the Broncos are going to get the football. Now they're down big here in the fourth. They had to try the onside kick. Can't fault them for the effort at least. No, you can't at all. And if nothing else, now you've put something that you're trying to practice, right, that you, you've worked on into a game situation, and now you can go back and dissect it. So if you need it again sometime, maybe you'll find a better way to do it. But, yeah, this game's pretty much done for them. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Kevin, they give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six at the 41-yard line. They'll keep it on the ground. Gordon. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. The tackle made by Jake Ryan. A two-yard gain on the play. And it's third down. So this one will wind up a Denver victory. And they say it's never easy to come into Denver to win because of the altitude. Uh, they look pretty comfortable in the altitude. They certainly did. I'm not quite sure how they got prepared. And it's always been a big debate about what to do. I lived out there at one point. I lived in Colorado Springs. And I remember saying to someone after my second or third day there, like, this altitude thing, this is no big deal. And day four, it hit. And it hit hard. And it took me a while to get ready and get acclimated. So some teams, they like to come in early, try and get you know, try and get on 